my kako. My name is Walter Kavaiaia, your host for Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. Today we will step back in time and learn the history and the legacy of Kamaka Ukulele of Hawaii. Joining me today is my special guest, Mr. Chris Kamaka, grandson of its founder, Samuel Kai Ali'ili Kamaka Sin Kamaka. Aloha, Chris. Hello, Walter. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for taking time. I know how busy you are down at the uh, at uh, Kamaka, and so I appreciate you being here. Um, before Chris and I get into talking story, we, and we have a lot of, of pictures that will reminisce and take us back in time, I'd like to just start off by uh, telling a little bit about the story of Kamaka Ukulele. Shortly after the turn of the century, Samuel Kai Ali'ili Kamaka began crafting core wood ukuleles from the basement of his Kaimuki home. In 1916, he formed his one-man shop, Kamaka Ukulele and Guitar Works, and soon established a solid reputation for making only the highest quality ukuleles. And then, in 1921, Kamaka Ukuleles, and if I could ask our uh, engineer to put up our first picture, there we go. I think that's... Uh, I think the address for that, Chris, is 1814 South King Street. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, uh, I one. see the sign on there. It says Kamaka and Sons Hawaiian Ukuleles. <laughs> um, gosh, when I look back at it, and I'm thinking of King Street now, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, it's actually uh, was located right where on the corner where Gyotaku uh, restaurant oh. is there, when they, and then when they widen the road. That's when uh, Grandpa had to move, but uh, in that convertible there was my <laughs> Uncle Fred oh, seriously? and with my mom. Oh, right really? Right there, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, and then so then in the mid-20s, uh, your grandfather, Sam Kamaka, uh, laid out a pattern for a new, what he called an oval-shaped ukulele body type yeah. um, from the traditional, I guess you call it the eight figure. Yeah, uh, figure eight. Figure eight, eight yeah. Uh, and so if I could ask... Uh, um, our engineer to show it. Yeah, there. So we want to keep that picture. What a handsome looking uh, luthier there. So that's Grandpa. That's Grandpa. And he's holding up that ukulele. And so according to, you know, uh, sources, it says that he laid out this pattern for an oval-shaped uh, ukulele body. His friends remarked that it looked uh, like a pineapple. And so I guess that kind of stuck with the... And then eventually uh, some of his friends painted the front to duplicate the fruit. A pineapple. Yeah. Uh, a few few years later, in 1928, Sam Kamaka patterned that particular design. Thus began the original pineapple ukulele, which produced, according to sources, uh, a resonant, mellow sound, very distinct uh, uh, of, of than the traditional uh, figure eight type ukulele. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because I've never actually played. So what, what, what do they mean uh, in terms of... He was kind of experimenting, you know, with the sound at oh, the I time. See. And, see. and uh, it was a lot easier to bend the wood. Um, in those days, all he had was a pipe and with a heating element inside. And he would just bend, you know, bend the wood uh, over the heated pipe. So the pineapple shape was a lot easier for him to, okay. to bend. And... Um, uh, it, it, it eventually caught on to, you know, a lot of our, my aunts and uncles were, you know, entertainers, you know, with the Royal Hawaiian Girls Glee Club and, and down at Waikiki. So it kind of caught on with them. And then before you know it, you know, he was Everybody busier wanted than one anything. of those, huh? Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, before creating that uh, body style, mm -hmm. I mean, was he already creating pretty the, much the, the figure eight the, shape? The figure eight yeah. shape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was there a difference in sound? I mean, because you guys still sell them today. It's pretty close, it's pretty you know, close. To, the, to the tone quality, but um, just something a little different, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you folks, I mean, do you folks still sell? We still do. do. You still do? We still do. Yeah. Um, excellent. Yeah. So I'm going to scroll down here, and that, that became an instant success uh, worldwide. Yeah, yeah. Really, uh, uh, really it, popular. It continues to be... Uh, Still, yeah. Signature. I mean, we still get quite a few uh, inquiries and orders for, you for do. the pineapple ukulele. Yeah. I'm going to ask uh, Rob, our engineer, if he can put up picture number three, I believe. There you go. The so, yeah. I love looking at these two guys. So, <laughs> tell us who these are, Chris. Okay, on. the one on the right, that's my dad. And he's holding up the our centennial pineapple, which we uh, 
made uh, for our 100 year anniversary. And my Uncle Fred is right behind him on the, looks like a concert size. Uh, those, those are two special ukuleles with binding and, and really high quality wood and inlays on the top. And yeah, and they're still, my uncle still comes in uh, every day to do the tour, uh, Tuesday through Friday. And my dad, uh, he's, he's, he's 97 now. And uh, my uncle, I think, is 90, just made 95. So yeah, they're, uh, they still get around. Too. And look at those smiles there. Uh, <laughs> so keep us on our toes. They keep you on your toes. Uh. <laughs> so I mean, let's pause there for a second. Yeah. So your dad is pretty much permanently retired, and yeah. and Uncle Fred comes in to do his the tours, tour and then he goes home. So tell us about. You know, so who's running the business now? I mean, it's, it's pretty much. Uh, well, my cousin Fred handles the. Office, the office, and all the bookwork, and um, myself and my brother Casey, as well as my two sons, uh, Christopher and Dustin. We are, we're pretty much in the in the back with the, the making and all and the production, the, the manufacturing, area. production. Yeah, my my son Dustin, he, he's a pilot now with Hawaiian, so he only comes in part time, as well as Casey, who's also a pilot. Yeah, I know. So, but uh, they're they're both a big addition. Christopher oh. is basically the only uh, son full time. Yeah. Oh, nice. Do you have any um, females that work in there? For, I mean, family. Um, family, no, no. But we have uh, three. Let's see, one, two, three, in the back, uh, female workers, and two in the front. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to get to talking about that particular location. So uh, during the 30s, I believe, um, Sam Kamaka Sr. introduced his two sons that we just saw, uh, Chris's dad, which is Sam Jr., and then Chris's uncle, Sam's brother, Fred. And that was that picture you saw, to craft ukulele making, even though the boys were only, so they, they got into the family business uh, just like you guys got started when they were young, and yeah. it says in elementary school. Um, in 1945, I want to say the business was reorganized and the name changed uh, to Kamaka and Sons Enterprises. And so I'm going to ask Rob if he can throw up uh, our next picture. Okay, there's the family. So we know uh, your dad is on the on, on the, the left ukulele, there, yeah. on the ukulele, and, uncle and then Uncle the Fred. Right. And, and then directly behind my uncle is uh, my brother Casey. And in the center with the red shirt is my son, Christopher. Okay. And then behind him is my cousin, Fred. And then that's me on the left, behind my dad. And, and uh, your son, uh, Christopher, he's holding up a picture that's of your of that's grandpa. That's of my grandfather, yes. That's the, that's the one that started everything, huh? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> really nice picture there. So tell us what happens after the two sons, you know, then... There's a portion that I read somewhere that your dad, or maybe both your dad and Uncle Fred, um, were drafted into the army, mm -hmm. and uh, so they they were out of the business. I'm assuming that your your grandpa still ran the business, yeah, while they served in the military, right? And uh, you know, once they uh, they widened the road, uh, my grandfather had to move everything out to Lulule. Oh. We had a, we have we still have property out there, and he um, moved all the machinery out there and built you know on the, the homestead land out there in uh, Waianae. Oh. And uh, Dad was in uh, Guadalcanal, and, and pretty much my uncle Fred was uh, in the military until uh, the early seventies when he retired. I remember because when I you know in the early days in the sixties when when I used to come into the shop, I used to see Uncle Fred. In uniform sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I asked, Probably oh, in transit or yeah, something. Yeah, transit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I never knew. Um, so when, he, when uh, Grandpa moved to the shop, the guitar works, yeah, the, yeah. from King Street, then for, there was a time that he went out in Lulule. Yeah. This was before he would come back where you permanently are today. Right, right. At 550 South Street, yeah? Yeah. So um, he was out at Waianae, and that's where he kind of he, he got ill. And then oh, um, once, you know, the war was over, then my dad was away at school on the GI Bill. 
And he was studying to be an entomologist. Yes, I read about that. I yeah. never knew that about your dad. And he's working on his PhD uh, when he got the call. And uh, he, he dropped everything, came home, took care of dad for about a year until he passed. And then, uh, you know, he had all this machinery here and he said, decided to give it a try for a little wow. while and see. And the rest is history. The rest is history. That, that must have been a... I mean, for your, both your dad and your mom, that must have been a big decision, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I never knew that about your dad, that he was, uh, you know, a PhD in entomology, and I thought, wow. Yeah, yeah, he knows everything about bugs, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, I had to look that up. What is entomology? The science of bugs, and I went, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From bugs to ukulele making, huh? Eh? Wow, okay. <laughs> That's a story to, to tell. Uh, I'll um, tell you. Now, in what year did the company move uh, from that King Street location? Out? Then they went to Luwalole yeah. for a time. And you've been, so I, I do know that your, your Kaka'ako, the business district location that you folks have been, I, I read somewhere that you folks have been there since 1959. Yeah, I think they built the shop in 58. So, um, yeah. That, that 1959 is significant. Anybody out there knows that's the year of statehood for Hawaii. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of, you know, tying that into, you know, Kamaka Ukulele, your grandpa, your dad, your uncle, now your generation, and your son is already into the business, yeah. your both your sons. Yes. I mean, it's really marvelous. I mean, if I had an audience looking right here, I would, the audience would stand up and applaud <laughs> because that is really something. Um, I did read an article that said that this is the oldest and longest running family owned business in all of Hawaii. Wow. And so I just, you know, on behalf of the people of Hawaii, I just want to say mahalo to you, Chris, and to your entire family uh, uh, for, no. you know, I mean, sounds like both your dad and even yourself could have all gone in different directions. Exactly. But because of, you know, love of family, commitment, and those kinds of things, mm. you know, your, your dad, for example, was. PhD in entomology, you know, and decided, made a decision. I'm sure yeah. that must have been challenging for mom and dad. Yeah. It's a lot of work, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you tend to really get to love it, you know, after yeah. well, you have to, trying right? it and getting into it. And uh, it, it's not easy, you know, with family. You know, it's got its ups and downs, but uh, sure. all in all, it's been really, really great. You know, and we haven't even touched on the fact that Chris uh, is a well-known musician, and we're going to get to talking about that uh, in a bit. I have another question. So there have been several company name changes. Can you walk us through that just slightly? Uh, initially, we saw there on King Street, where you mentioned uh, Giotaku was uh, yeah. is today. Yeah. That, that was known as Kamaka Ukulele and Guitar, Guitar Works. Works yeah. And then uh, it, it eventually went to Kamaka and Sons Hawaiian Ukuleles. Yeah. Then Kamaka and Sons Enterprises, and now Kamaka Hawaii. Kamaka Hawaii. Incorporated. Incorporated, yeah. 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 Um, when your dad uh, and your uncle got involved in running the business, um, tell us, because uh, I, know, I know your brother Casey flew for Aloha Airlines. Right. right? Uh, and now he's still flying with uh, Hawaiian Airlines. Yeah. And, but what... What specifically does your brother Casey do? Because I remember years ago you mentioned to me that he kind of does a lot of the specialty or custom ukuleles. Is that, does he continue yeah. to he do still, that? still he still is pretty much in charge of our custom shop. Okay. And uh, he does a lot of our um, you know research and development and just and uh, actually purchasing and selecting our wood material. Yeah, the wood and stuff and. Um, that's a big, big a, plus, man. That's too. a big part yeah, of it, too. It takes yeah. care of a lot of stuff for us. and uh, Plus flying, you know. And so that's, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. I don't know how he handles that. And, and I know he had a son that was that attended Kamehameha School, yeah? Yeah. And and he's got one, just, one that he's at the University of San Diego. And the youngest boy is at, he's a junior at Kamehameha now. Probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, lots to talk about uh, with Chris and the, the Kamaka Hawaii and, and the legacy that they have established here in Hawaii when it comes to ukulele. So we're about ready to take a short break. We're going to be back. I'm your host, Walter Kawaiaia, for Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. 
And my guest today, Chris Kamaka from the Kamaka Ukuleles of Hawaii. We'll be right back. Aloha, this is Rob Hack. My show is Exporting from Hawaii every other Thursday from 12 to 12.30 p.m. where I bring in people involved in the entire exporting infrastructure in Hawaii, including government, academia, and manufacturers and shippers themselves. Please join me every other Thursday, 12 to 12.30 p.m. on Exporting from Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Jane Sawyer with the Small Business Administration and one of your hosts for Adventures in Small Business, a partnership with ThinkTech and with the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center, all serving small businesses in Hawaii and telling you the story about their strategies, their ideas, their drive, and the way they help Hawaii succeed and be a bright light in small business. You'll find it here every Thursday at ThinkTech. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you soon. Aloha mai kakou, and welcome back to Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. I'm your host, Walter Kawaii'a, and joining me today is my special guest from Kamaka Hawaii Incorporated, Mr. Chris Kamaka. Thank you, Chris. Aloha. So before Thank the you. break, we um, <clears throat> we're just chatting about the family business and you know um, Chris's grandpa, the founder and originator of Kamaka Ukuleles, talked about Chris's dad, uh, Sam Jr. and Uncle Fred, and they're pretty much retired now. And so Chris, along with his some of his siblings and Chris's two sons, Chris's brother, they they run the show at Kamaka Ukuleles. Um, I, I had some technical questions to ask, Chris. I'm curious. So, how many ukuleles? Um, you know, well, I'm curious to find out production-wise. Uh, is there a target number of number of ukuleles uh, that you folks, uh, you know, have a goal to set to produce uh, monthly or quarterly or? Yeah, um, we're pretty much set up at the shop to to roughly about maybe 15 ukuleles a day. 15 a day. Yeah, so yeah, and it, the, there's different stations. So throughout each station, you know, each, each individual is uh, entrusted in doing, you know, at least, well, up to 15 a day in their, in their uh, station. And uh, yeah. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> 15 a day. Oh, that's pressure. Uh, well, it's a give and take a few. Yeah, but, yeah, you yeah, know, sure. we, try and, we try and shoot for that. And uh, it's been working out pretty good. I mean, I, you know, crew. I, I'm, I'm very little, uh, you know, aware because my sons worked at Kamako Kalales, yeah. but, you know, they did some work, uh, you know, with someone else. Uh -huh. And so, I, you know, I've been in the area and I know, yeah. I mean, I'm sure the goal is every, every ukulele that's being put together, the objective is in the end, you don't have to destroy it because there's some flaw or there's some imperfection something didn't go right i mean that i mean at the cost of of all of the material mm -hmm. and the time and the labor to do this um there has to be precautions so that you know you don't have throwaways or yeah. whatever, whatever you call it yeah you know of course things happen right but um ideally each person knows what to look for as far as you know flaws in the wood or, or you know density of the wood or or whatever but um you know, it it happens, and usually by the end uh, of the production, where 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 I am, mm -hmm. I, I check each one before you know we send them out. So you know, usually by the time it gets to me, everything's pretty pretty close. <laughs> pretty yeah, close, yeah. yeah. Um, so I want to go back. So when when Grandpa started the business, I'm assuming that the type of wood he used it was all coal wood. No, well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. He he used coal, you know, Philippine mahogany. Okay. Uh, monkey pod, whatever you could, especially like during the war, it was tough mm -hmm. to get coal because stuff wasn't being shipped, you know, into the island. But, so uh, a lot of so experimenting lot of, on Grandpa's part, yeah, with different types of wood. Yeah, monkey pod he used a lot in the, in the old days, and Philippine uh, mahogany. Yeah. So over the years and even up to present time, I mean, primarily the choice of wood for kamaka ukulele, the instruments is primarily coal. Yes, primarily coal. Yes. 
So I'm curious, uh, and maybe the viewing audience might be curious. So do you folks have your own property with, with you know, where you grow your own koa trees? <laughs> or uh, how, do you, how do you get the material, the wood? Unfortunately, we don't, you know, have property. But, you know, we're, we've been fortunate where um, we've been able to uh, get wood from various uh, millers and um, keep it pretty, pretty steady, you know, and have a good relationship, you know, with, with these guys. And, not getting easier. Not getting easier, I would imagine. Okay, I'm going to ask my engineer. We got eight images, and I promise him we're going to get through all eight. So if, if he could through, uh, there we go. Okay, yeah. so we're looking. This is vintage. Um, so yeah, that's the old shop there. And my grandfather with his leaning on the showcase there, and that's my uncle Fred holding the ukulele there okay. in the front. Okay, that that's one of his workers. One of the, the workers yeah. back then. Okay. Um, next picture there, Rob. Okay, so this is actually the current location. Exactly. Uh, on I believe South the address Street. South Street, five fifty yeah. South Street. But the name has changed, and and well, if you look at the vehicles, <laughs> most of those vehicles are non-existent. So I'm going to guess, well, nineteen fifty nine, or this is probably in the early sixties somewhere, yeah. yeah. And it was yeah. the company name, Kamaka and Sons Enterprises. Yeah. yeah. So this is the exact location, and. Uh, I love looking at these whole pictures. They tell they tell a lot, and you can see by those automobiles. Yeah. All right, Rob, our next picture. Oh yeah, I love this one. So this must have been a special shot because this is not like, you know, hey, let's go take a picture. So tell us yeah. exactly because this looks like the very back of the building yeah, this where, where you back. keep. This is our storage area where we we air dry the wood. If you look closely, you can see um, there's sticks in between all of the pieces. That's so. The wind can blow through uh, to dry the wood. We don't put it in any kiln drying or anything. We do it all naturally like this, slow process of drying. So it takes a while. It takes at least about a year, uh, an inch a year, we, we usually say, for drying. So really? you know, some of those bigger ones back there have been there for quite some time. But uh, the ones right behind me there are more like eight quarter, two inch. So you know, a couple of years they've been drying. So, I mean, wow, that, I mean, the, the process of that, so the, the acquisition of the wood, the preparing of it, and then it has to sit there to, I guess, cure, for yeah. lack of a better term. Yeah, when, when we get the wood, it's still green. It's so still it's green. So still a lot of moisture in it, so we, we've got to let it sit there for some time before we actually start cutting it up. Cutting it up. Wow. Okay. Great smiles and <laughs> looking at... Uh, that, that looks like a lot of money sitting right there yeah. dry. That's a lot of money. Okay, Rob, our next picture there. All right, so this is kind of the nuts and bolts of the where all of this work gets done. Maybe you can take our viewers through. Yeah, that's the back of the shop there. Um, to the left is where the storage area is, and, and right there, that first uh, machine is our old bandsaw, which we still use. Um, it's a really vintage one. My grandpa used to use that. Really? So then we still use it, yeah. Wow. And then direct, directly behind, uh, next to that uh, is the, our new CNC machine. Okay. Uh, that's actually a computer numerical carving machine. So we do a lot of uh, work on there as far as uh, cutting and uh, carving of the necks and doing a lot of the engraving for the tops wow. and I stuff. Bet I bet. How long have you guys had that? Uh, um, probably from the early, early 2000s. Um, oh, I bet that saves a lot of time, huh? It does, um, and it's a lot more consistent. Consistent, because yeah, you can yeah. get the accuracy on that. Is, yeah, you know, it's yeah. all computerized, yeah. yeah? Wow. But there's still a lot of hands-on, though, but uh, that, sure. that, that, that has been really a big plus. Uh, and then and so, up, all, all up above is just um, uh, vacuums, you know, from mm -hmm. coming. And so we're looking at the back of the shop. And now into the middle, and I guess going off further to down. There's a little more area in the uh, in the workshop, and uh -huh. then beyond that is the front office. Yeah, I see. And how many, you know, on a on a daily basis, how many employees would be in the back there working? We've got a total about twenty five. Really, twenty five people now. People. Yeah. Wow, that's that is amazing. Um, all right, curious to see our next picture. 
Oh yeah. Okay. So this. <laughs> so we're gonna segue. I mean, you would you would just automatically assume that if you make ukuleles, you obviously can play them. And you must have uh, yeah. a talent of some sort, you know, because guys come in, like I come in, I want to buy an ukulele, never played an ukulele in my life. I'm uh, going to expect that anybody that comes to the corner there, come up ukuleles, can pick up an ukulele and demonstrate. So um, I know Chris, and besides his dad and his uncle, I mean, you're the only one that I know of uh, in that gang that actually played music, recorded music. Uh, yeah. Am, am I correct? Well, well, Dad did with the, Dad with the did, Glee right? Club, the Glee Club. ML and the Glee Club, right. um, as well as my uncle was with them also for a little while. But that kind of inspired me as far as you got the genes, Carl huh? singing. You got you Carl singing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, Chris and I go back. Uh, Chris, when I was playing music, uh, we had a chance yeah. to play together. And Chris is Chris is one of my all-time favorite upright bass players. <laughs> and so, yeah. So, what does Chris end up playing? He can play the ukulele. But he ends up playing, you know, the most difficult instrument, uh, not just to play, but to carry, you know, to gigs and everything. How did that happen? Well, I guess, you know, I wasn't too good on the ukulele. So <laughs> okay. My friends threw you me on it from the, Chris, not from me. <laughs> threw me on the bass, but I really, uh, you know, ukulele I play, it's really relaxing for me when I can. But the bass has really been a, a love that love I've for acquired, you. yeah. Yeah, I mean... You know, I'm sad to say, the ukulele is my instrument. Um, I dabble a little bit on the guitar, but never the bass. And, you know, having been with uh, the Kahau on the Lake Trio and, you know, seeing Tommy play. Yeah, and I, yeah. I've actually seen Tommy trying to teach uh, young guys that are trying to play bass. Thomas. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. I thought to myself, no frets? I'm not, I'm not going to play an instrument that doesn't have frets. Uh, you play a killer ukulele, Walter. Okay, so I'm going to ask Rob, uh, our time is, is running low on us. Do we have another picture there? Okay, so uh, we got Chris on the far left. That's Uncle Fred. That's uh, Fred, Fred Jr. Jr. That's uh, Chris's dad, Sam. And that's Chris's brother, Casey, on the, on the far end. Yeah. Yeah. That must have been a special occasion. This was, uh, one, one, I think, one of our uh, anniversary uh, get-togethers. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. Okay, our next image there, Rob. Okay, so this, this makes it authentic. So this is the end of the production line, and you see Chris, he has his serious look on. He's not smiling, but he's giving it the final once over to see flaws and imperfection. Yeah. And, you know, I look at that, I think, I'm confident. If he gives it that look, I'll buy that ukulele. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If Chris says it's good, it's good. Yeah. One more image there. Okay, yeah, we got to go back to Uncle Fred. And uh, Chris's dad, Sam, I love looking at these guys. They <laughs> smile. They look so happy. And I'm, I got to get me a shirt like that. You know, it, those, uh, they don't have them anymore. They don't have brands, them anymore. Yeah, but um, we had a beige one, which we carried only at the shop. But Yeah, I remember seeing that. I'm going to no try to see if we can get it going again. Oh, yeah, this is excellent. Well, Chris, you know, our time. Let, uh, I got to <laughs> scroll up here. <laughs> uh, to my closing monologue, if I can find it there. Well, where are we going? Anyway, Chris, I want to take this time to thank you for, you know, as a production manager, being away from Kamaka Hawaii Inc., uh, well, taking time to be here and to share the, the family business and continuing to be the oldest and longest running family business, 103 years, and no signs of flow, slowing down, eh? No signs. Well, thank you again, Chris, for joining me here at Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. As we stepped back in time and learned of this incredible history and legacy of Kamaka Ukulele of Hawaii with Chris Kamaka. I'm your host, Walter Kawai Until next time, everybody, take care and aloha no. Aloha.